The solar constant is an easy thing to measure now because we have satellites that are above the uh, atmosphere of the Earth that point and look directly at the sun. Prior to the advent of satellites, uh, scientists had to be a little more creative in trying to figure out what the irradiance was at the top of the Earth's atmosphere coming from the sun. And one of the methods that they devised uh, was the following. Uh, we set up an observation station and we measure the radiance uh, at looking at the sun uh, at different times of the day, starting at local noon when the sun is directly overhead, and then as the sun gets further and further down in the sky, it's now passing through a longer and longer path length of the atmosphere, and the is, radiance is actually going to decrease throughout the day. So what we can do is we can create a table that shows the local time, uh, the measured zenith angle, uh, starting off with zero directly overhead and almost 90 degrees uh, near sunset. And then we uh, have a column that is the secant of the zenith angle. Recall that the secant is 1 over the cosine of the zenith angle. And so when you have a zenith angle of zero, the cosine of zero is 1, and you'll end up with the shortest possible path length uh, in the Earth's atmosphere. And as the uh, zenith angle gets a little larger, uh, the sunlight has to pass through a longer path length, and this uh, function actually uh, represents that correctly. If you take it to its extreme of uh, the sun being at 90 degrees, basically being on the horizon, then the cosine of uh, the zenith angle of 90 is equal to zero, and you end up with an infinitely long path length. Um, so that's just showing that uh, the, uh, the radiation is being spread over an infinite surface at that angle. And then we have our measured radiance at each one of those times throughout the day. And if we plot that data up uh, as a function of secant of phi, which is a measure of the path length, and the natural log of the radiance, uh, then we have these data points uh, at a path length of 1, essentially secant of phi. We get that point, uh, 1.15 here, 2 there, and 5.75 out here. You can actually fit a straight line to this and calculate the intercept for extrapolating to a path length of zero. And at that point, that's the natural log of the radiance at the top of the atmosphere. But you might remember from a previous lecture, we know the relationship between the radiance and the irradiance is just uh, off by a factor of pi. So the, fly, the irradiance at the top of the atmosphere is defined as the solar constant at the top of the atmosphere, uh, which is going to be equal to pi times the radiance at the top of the atmosphere. And so if you take these measurements very carefully at a very specific location that uh, will not interfere or not have uh, many things that interfere, you can actually get a pretty good uh, estimate for the solar constant from measurements at the ground. So what's the best location to do this? Well, uh, first things first, you don't want to have a lot of atmosphere between you and the sun. So you want to be at a very high elevation. You want to have a zenith angle of zero be your start time. And that's only possible at taking this measurement in the tropics, because those are the only locations where at some point during the year the sun is directly overhead. Uh, you obviously don't want any clouds throughout the entire day, uh, because clouds will scatter some of that radiation, preventing it from getting to the surface. You don't want to have any air pollution in the air that will either scatter or absorb that solar radiation. Uh, you want to have dry air so that there's not much water vapor to absorb the infrared component of the solar radiation. And you want to have low ozone concentrations in the stratosphere uh, because uh, you don't want that ozone absorbing the solar radiation either. And as it turns out, uh, one of the best places to do this in the world is Mauna Loa Observatory on the Big Island of Hawaii. Um, it uh, is at an elevation of about 12,500 feet in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, it's well above the marine boundary layer. It's quite dry at those altitudes. And uh, there are times of the year uh, when you get no clouds at higher elevations, uh, when the sun is directly overhead, and you can take these measurements very accurately uh, from there. Uh, that being said, uh, I've had students take these measurements here at the University of Utah, and we've been able to get the uh, solar constant within 10%, which
which is actually pretty good considering uh, we're not at an extremely high elevation. We're nowhere near a zenith angle of zero uh, there. Uh, we're no clouds that day. We do have pollution in our city, and we do not. Uh, we do have uh, high ozone concentrations at mid latitudes in the stratosphere. So it is possible to do this uh, even at mid latitudes. Uh, but the best possible location would be Mauna Loa Observatory on the Big Island of Hawaii.